we have a three more accounts like liabilities, capital and revenue. And already we have discussed in detail what is liability, capital and revenue. So I hope you remember that what is the meaning of this. Okay, so these three accounts just behave opposite. That means liability, capital, revenue, normal balance always go to the credit side. So this side we will record these normal balances. And if it is liabilities, capital, revenues are decreasing, then it will go to the debit side. And vice versa, if it is increasing these accounts, so it will go to the credit side. So you have to remember this table whenever you are going for journal entry or you are going to record the transaction because this table is going to help you or to remind you that what is the rule of debit credit and we are going to use in today's context as well so that is why i have just recalled now let's talk about what is adjusting entries and why do we need to adjust journal entries so this has happened because at the end of the each year let's say as i said earlier that in India, we are following the financial year, which is start of April and it is end in March. So at the end of the March or the this particular month, which is the last month of the year, financial year, a lot of activities happen in the business just like in normal days. And something which we have recorded in the March end, which is not yet recorded properly. So some kind of right, uh, some kind of adjustment we have to what are these adjustments? These adjustments are totally based on the matching principle. And this matching principle we have already discussed in the first lecture, if you remember. And matching principle is means revenues are recorded when uh, these are earned and the expenses are recorded when it is incurred. So you have to match the time also. Suppose that revenue is uh, recorded in the March month, so it should be earned in the March month as well. You cannot record the future revenue in the previous year. Suppose that in the March after that, there is a new year will start, that is April next year. So something is going to happen in next year, you cannot record in the March. Or you cannot recognize that revenue and expenses for the previous year. So you have to match these revenues and expenses to this particular time period. So there is a two conditions could be occur that is called accrual and deferral. It could be accrued, it could be deferred. So revenue earned or expenses incurred that have not been previously recorded, it considered as accruals. Whereas the deferrals means receipts of the assets or the payment cash in advance of revenue or expenses recognition. So something you have received in advance but doesn't belong to this time period, it is belongs to future, so that is called deferrals. So these two categories may incur in the business at the time of a year end, and that is why we have to adjust all the accounts at the end of the year. Whatever the transaction related to the accruals and deferrals, we have to adjust. If it is still you have a confusion, so don't worry about that because we will also talk about this in detail with the help of exam. So let's go further and talk about in detail what is deferred revenue. So this is a particular term which we used in the accounts that is called deferred revenue. And we also use one more term is called accrued revenue. So what is the difference? Deferred revenue is these, uh, the means is when the cash is received prior to the revenue earned. Something advance you have received from the customer before the delivery of the goods. That is called deferred revenue. You have received money today, but you are going to deliver the goods or services in future. And that is called deferred revenue or advance payment you have received. For example, XYZ company delivered services in September for an $800 and the payment that was made three months ago. So the company delivered services in September, but three months before this September, they have already received $800. So this $800 was already received three months back, and now they are delivering the services. So that is called deferred revenue. And because of these deferred and accrued revenue, the adjustment may be happened in the business or in the transactions at the end of the year. 
So how this transaction particularly is going to be recorded? Because now in September, you are going to deliver the services, but the money is already you have received. So you will be debited that the unearned service revenue, $800, and the sales revenue will be credited by $800 with the same amount. Similarly, how the accrued revenue is going to be recorded and what is the meaning? So when the revenues are earned but not yet recorded at the end of the accounting period because cash changes hand after the services is performed or goods delivered. For example, company XYZ, the same company, delivered services on the last day of the month. Suppose that you deliver the services on 31st March. Uh, you know that 31st March is the last day of the year, accounting year, okay? It's not calendar year, so don't be confused why I'm saying March 31st is the end year. It is, a, it is not a calendar year, it is a financial or accounting year, okay? So March 31st, if you deliver some kind of services or goods, and you have created invoice of $4,400. So obviously the revenue has been accrued, but the cash not yet received, you will receive next day and the next day is the next year. So you have to record this accrued revenues in a different way. Accrued receivables $4,400 and the sales revenue is $4,400. So the account receivable will be created with the same amount because the services has been performed. The goods has been delivered in the current year Maybe the money will receive in future, that doesn't matter because this money which you are going to receive belongs to current year, not from the future. And that is why these all adjustment is required in the business. Okay. So let's go to the further to understand the two more terminologies in this adjustment, deferred expenses and accrued expenses. So if it is, there is a deferred revenue and accrued revenue, then, then definitely we have a deferred expenses and accrued expenses. What is deferred expenses? The amount paid in advance of using that assets that benefits more than one period. Something you are utilizing in the business and for that you have paid in advance. Then is that is called deferred expense. What is this? Suppose that the one month XYZ company's insurance expired in June and the payment you have made for $800 which is going through from June to September. So you are paying for the insurance services and you are paying for four months, June, July, August, September. There is a four month payment you have done and the, we are talking about only for June. So you have made payment in advance for three months. So $800 is a four month payment. So what is the one month payment? $200. So we will only recognize that payment, which is belongs to this month. What advance we have paid, it is called prepaid advance, prepaid insurance. So the insurance expense is 200 and the prepaid insurance is 200 because we have paid for four months. So one month payment is $200. Now the same thing will apply in the accrued expenses. That means the process of recognizing the expense before the cash is paid. So the before the payment of cash, you recognize the expenses. Suppose that XYZ company employees earned $550 during June and are paid in July. So your employee have earned some wages or salaries in this particular month you are not paying in the same month, you are paying in the next month. And which is generally happen, not generally in most of the cases or 100% in the cases, you are uh, utilizing the services of the employee, but you are paying in the next month. So that is called accrued expenses. The expenses incurred, but cash not yet paid. Suppose that I am working in a company and I am uh, working for the January month, but I will receive my remuneration or salary in the February month, maybe in first fab or maybe fifth fab or maybe tenth fab. So the cycle of period or time cycle or the payment cycle would be different, but definitely I will receive money for my salary, for my work in the next month, and that is called accrued expense. I'm not getting paid in advance, generally, most of the cases, I'm getting paid in late. So the wages expense is 550, and the wages payable is 550 
and now we have paid the wages for the next month in the cash form. So how it is recorded first? It is recorded as a liability. The moment I paid, I will record as a payment. I will reduce my liability because as you know that wages payable, wherever you see this word payable is considered as a liability. Okay, I hope you remember yesterday we have talked about accounts payable, notes payable, receivable, all these terminologies we have discussed. 